Hey guys, you're about to watch the Sony Alpha A6000. I love the camera. I personally have the Nex 5R and I love that one and it's been hard to replace it. I tested a Canon 70D and it was really good but it wasn't that much better since that one cost around $1,500. And during this video, you can pick up an A6000 for around $800. The A6000 doesn't look as sleek as the Nex 5R, but it definitely has the similar functions to it. You got the great grip to it, you got the tilt screen, you got an actual pop-up flash in there, and it has a power zoom to it as well. It has Wi-Fi, it has NFC for your Android device so you can transfer files and videos. And another big thing that I love is that it's compact enough to like not feel so bulky in your hand. Ah yes, and that viewfinder. The quality behind that display looks great. You're seeing exactly what you should see when you're about to take the picture or video. As soon as you block that proximity sensor, it'll display the viewfinder automatically for you. Listen to what 11 frames per second sounds like. I think that's incredibly fast and you can also play back because it takes pictures fast enough to make it look like a GIF, almost like a video you can play off of it. You do have to give it a little time to save because it's a lot it as a process, but it doesn't take too long. So the majority of my pictures turned out pretty good. Obviously I'm in sports mode where I can take multiple shots of an action. It's not perfect, but it's better than any other camera I've done it with. But that's not why I bought this camera. I bought it for the autofocus video. So now let me show you some actual footage of the A6000. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I think it looks amazing. It's super clear, the automatic focusing is fast on 95% on everything I wanted to do so far. Sometimes I get too close where no camera that close can focus but without like a macro or pancake kind of lens. And all this is being handheld, I'm moving it as slowly as I can. I'm not saying I have the steadiest hand ever, but in my opinion it doesn't look too shaky. Look at the autofocus on the right and between the leaves and on the left. It's almost like it predicts exactly where I want it to focus on. The majority of my videos and shots are always in program and pretty much are always gonna be in autofocus mode. But I still wanted to play with some manual focusing and it's a lot harder because you have to actually control the depth of field. With the manual focus, it gives you that touch tracking feel to it because the A6000 does not have a touch screen so you don't have that touch tracking. But then again, you might not need it. Oh yeah! That looks super sexy, it's just so quick. And the detail that you get out of the video is just superb. If you're not wanting to start off with the Nex 5R, which I have had over a year, and I tried to replace it with other cameras, but I just could not find anything better than it. You can get the NEX 5R, actually the 5T with the NFC, for about $500. I'm not entirely sure how this video is gonna turn out after it's been compressed and uploaded to YouTube servers, but on my computer, the raw file looks so good. Someday I'll upload a whole video without it being edited so you can see that true detail that's even less compressed rather than it being rendered into a format. So what do you think so far? Do you like the quality that you're getting out of this camera? I know I did because it's just as good or better than my NEX 5R. So if you're ready now, we can go inside so we can take a look at its specs, functions, exterior, and a quick comparison to my NEX 5R. The grip feels nice for my medium sized hands. And for the ports, you have mini HDMI with a micro USB charging. So not only do you get to charge your battery with your Android charger, but you could also take out the battery and get those wall plug chargers to charge. The screen tilts up for those low angles and tilts down for those high angles. The viewfinder has this rubbery attachment that is meant to cup your eyeball better if you'd like. You don't have to use it. The built-in pop-up flash with the spring action for angling bounce shots off the ceiling, off walls, much better lighting shots. The dials on the right, you can feel each notch quality built into that. Next to it, you got your priority settings. And on the top center between the lens, you get Sony's hot shoot for their accessories. You might be able to get third party. I'm not too sure. Probably with adapters, just like the lenses, you can get the adapters to make it work with other DSLR lenses. And this lens is very light and easy to take off and on. Here's what it looks like when you're plugging it in through micro USB. You get this little orange, yellow light, whatever you want to call it. But you can't use it while it's charging. It automatically falls into USB storage. And I love the fact that you don't have to turn anything off to swap the SD card. So you can do it whenever it's on. And as I mentioned earlier, it does not have a touch screen. The only reason I wouldn't want the touch screen is to do that touch focus tracking. But the automatic focus tracking by itself, it's already so good that it doesn't break the deal. The next 5R is definitely smaller, but that big lens makes it look a lot bigger. But the A6000 does not feel huge. It's still very comfortable to hold. The lenses are E-mount, so they're interchangeable between each other. 
the 5R screen rotates all the way towards you so you can take selfies. And the A6000 does not because of the viewfinder. The A6000 has a built-in flash and the NEX 5R does not have one built in. So you have this external flash that you have to screw in. It works well, but it looks ugly and it's a hassle carrying that around. These two cameras are different, but at the same time, they have the similarities and functions. But the difference between them is one is 16.1 megapixel, the other is 24.3. One has a power zoom, a viewfinder, NFC. They also use the same type of batteries. So if you have some laying around or you want to buy some used one, you can get them very easily. You're able to control the camera within an app available on Android or iPhone. And here you're looking at me connecting my Android smartphone to the A6000. The 5R also does this. So not only do you use your phone as a remote, but you have an extra viewfinder with the ability to zoom, control the aperture, the ISO as well. The quality is not fully transferred to your phone, but that's not the point. But when you take the picture, you'll definitely see the quality come back out because it stores on your phone as well. Since the A6000 doesn't have touch focus, your smartphone can make up for it. Therefore, you'll be able to touch exactly where you want to focus. So that works out really nicely. Since it has Wi-Fi, you can connect on the internet, send your files to your phone, to your TV via DLNA. They even have their own Sony app store so you can download extra apps and filters, different functions for your videos and pictures and editing that you could, I mean, lots of stuff in there that I won't use but is there for you to check out and just in case you don't know what I'm doing here what you're looking through right now is my camera recording my phone which my phone is showing me what the other camera is recording or taking pictures of now since I said recording that's one thing that does not work you can't record you can only take pictures you can't record video through the streaming service so then I set my camera down on the chair, 5R is recording my cell phone, and then I use the A6000 to record what my 5R is seeing through my cell phone. It's a little inception, tongue twisting type of scenario, but it makes sense if you're following with what's happening right now. But the reason why I did this is to see how far my Wi-Fi connection can transfer still between these cameras and my Wi-Fi is all the way into my room, so it already was probably around 50 feet. And that's the last picture I took before I lost connection. I'm not sure what you think, but I found the A6000 to be a slight upgrade. Not too much that you would feel that you need to. I think I have a problem where I just have to have the next better thing. I think it's in all of us, but I just have a problem where I just can't fight it and I need to have the next best thing. Part is I don't even have enough money to buy it. I just put it on my credit card. And I guess that's just the way. I do it to it. And there you guys have it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, tune in for the best apps and games of the weeks and other tech. Thanks for your support. Until next time. Later.